Hello everyone and welcome to the 71st episode of the Top 5 Weekly. I hope you're all well and staying safe. In this series, each week we look at the most popular workshop creations on Steam. We analyze each one of the submissions, we discover their features and finally we test them out here in the world of Stormworks. Now, if you're enjoying this video, comment below anything else you'd like to see in my future videos. Why there? Don't forget that like and subscribe button and click the little bell icon to be notified my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So all said, let's get straight into and get started with the first creation of this episode. And starting off with the first creation of the episode, we have the DB234 Multipurpose Locomotive. This is a creation done by Sir Murtak. Now, top speed around 205 kilometers per hour, uh, suggested top speed around 140, the range of about 150 to 300 kilometers based on obviously throttle and load. Uh, fuel inside it, 7,500. Uh, there's a couple different uh, CIFA and traction control systems in there. Also an air brake system inside there, which is pretty cool. Uh, so let's go and spawn this one in and see how it drives here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning in the train, you can see this looks really, really nice and very detailed. I really like the detail underneath here. This looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, he's put this together and, and even that he's gone one out from the actual uh, bogies themselves really quite nice you can see there's a bunch of paint blocks here on the outside looks like some mic processes he's gone used for some detailing there really really cool doors on either side to get to the front or the back uh, we have a coupling system at the front we have a fluid connector really really lovely detail here and looks like exactly the same on the other side so let's go and get inside here the door opens inwards and I'm guessing we use the handle, yep, handle to get in. And we're presented with this little walkway so we can go into the cab here, beautiful detail in here. And we can move our way back also, which seems like we're in the engine room, so let's get some lights on. Um, so we have all our circuit breakers, including the CFA system and the connect power relay. Um, in the back here, it seems like everything else is just some engines and some ports and things like that. Really quite nice detail in here. Once again, lights, turn them on and off, and then we have exactly the same on the other side for control reasons. Okay, cool. Let's go and kill the lights and let's go and see how this works. So it looks like we have a handbrake here and padded seats. We have our radio and track frequencies, forge, reverser, master key switch, throttle, uh, dials, eaters, instrument lights, cab lights, headlights. We have the safer system and the horn, fuel pump, compressor, engine starter, brake lever, speedo, and okay, and then, ooh, okay. So let's see if we can get this on. So we're gonna master key on. Let's get our uh, fuel pumps, air compressor, and get the engine up and running. Okay, so that's it. Our uh, brake lever's off. I think we need to get this handbrake down. We'll get the handbrake all the way down, or we head off. So we can also change tracks, which is perfect. Okay, and okay, that's down. We need to, how's our brake pressure? Okay, so air pressure's great. Our brake pressure's, that's good. Okay, so that's fine. Now it's only going on when we get that, so that's perfect. Okay, so I think we can just directly get our throttle up. And we should, in theory, be able to just move here. Let's see. Ah, we didn't get it on the forwards. Okay, so forward mode. Really nice. That's quick too. Okay, cool. And obviously you can kill throttle, put it in reverse if you want to. And it should go in reverse if I'm correct. Yep, that works perfectly. Great. I want to try the CIFA system out, so if I'm correct, we just come here and turn that on. Get back in the seat here. Let's get some brakes on, actually. I want to be going backwards. Okay, and let's put it in forwards mode. Brake pressure is going up. Perfect. Let's get some throttle. Pretty much what this means is you have to hold the button down when you start getting some warnings. Get throttle level up. You can see it's blinking, so now we need to hold it down, and that should prevent it then from throwing its emergency brakes on. I'll throw it up again. 
Okay, so for some reason actually it's thrown its emergency brake on, so let's kill the throttle. Let's take it out, get our brakes on, should then reset it. Should being the keyword here. Brake is on. Maybe we need to get the handbrake up. Reset it. Let's see. Or we need to turn the master key switch off. It's still active. Master key back on. Get our handbrake off. So it's still ringing. So I don't know exactly what I missed there. So if I'm correct, I need to put everything in neutral. Go back and back here and see what's going on. System off. Ah, uh, maybe we just need it to come here. It's still on for some reason. Okay, well let's leave it off for now. Uh, I might have missed something on the instructions with that. But yeah, besides that, um, it's a really, really cool, really, really cool train. Get some throttle up on it. And let's go forward. Cool, and let's move. Let's see what speed we can get to on this. I really love the detail here, even like some little visors here. He's got the front. It's really quick. Really, really quick. Got some headlights that we can get on. Always quite useful. And then we have the radio power, so it looks like just a nice radio. And then we got request change signals. We can actually change the frequency of the track. So for example, if you want to put it on 440, which I think my map works with. Uh, let's see if we can change the tracks in a few minutes and see if that works, but going a really nice speed. The design of it is really cool too. Really nice train. Yeah, let's go up to the next thing and let's see if we can change the tracks. Love the detail here. Okay, and uh, let's get up to this junction. We'll actually slow ourselves down. Not that much. I want to test. Should be a junction just coming here. We can try change the tracks. And there we go. It does work. Wow. Okay. Cool. That's awesome. Working perfectly. Very very nice. And then we're heading off to the Arctic. Well, it's a lovely creation. Definitely go check it out. Let's go and move on to the next creation of the episode. And moving on to the next creation, we have the Rescue Hovercraft. This is a creation done by Mike. Now he said this was more or less a proof of concept as he started with uh, that he wanted to do a seamless transition between land and water with the hovercraft. Now quite a lot of features on this one, uh, including uh, engines, we got propeller pitch, we got all kinds of cool things in there. Seems like quite a little bit of detailed of screens and startups and things like that. So let's spawn this one in and see how it works here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning in the next creation, this hovercraft looks really cool. Uh, I love the design of it, especially with the actual flotation around the side here. Uh, really cool with the skirting. Um, seems like we have a nice little ramp here actually to go up, which is a nice little touch. Uh, going around it, we have the actual propellers with some actual, um, let's see, with some rudders here at the back uh seems like a stray paint block there um and some jet engine here at the top of it also now moving around so let's actually get up the ladder and let's up okay so it's actually movable so you can actually just the way like that okay pretty easy we have a little hatch to get in we have refueling and yeah that's about it so let's get inside and close the door okay so it's got like a double lock there Looks like a passenger area, medical, also inside here. We can't go any further, um, but we can go into a little area here. So it looks like we have some equipment and we also have a ladder to go up to the main controls. Okay, pilot and engineer. So let's see what engineer has. Batteries, things, we have run, the fans, extra fans, monitors, running lights, cockpit lights, emergency flashers. That's pretty cool. So we have our engines, we have 
Well, so let's have a look at this first. We need to get the run on both of those, and I think we need to get it up, get it up and running. Little radio there, little map direction. Very nice. Uh, so radar mode, map mode. We have GPS waypoints. Okay, that's pretty cool. So those are on now, so we can. Okay, I guess we have to leave them on. Okay, we'll wait for that to get up, and we can jump into the pilot seat here also. So, oh, cool radar mode. What radar mode does, to be honest, I'm guessing it switches. Ah, so we have a waypoint map there also. Radar range. Okay, nice. So, get lift hands on now. I think we're on. Yeah, it's fine. Lift hands on. Okay, so we're currently just lifting out there. Can we just go forward? Oh, wow, we can. Okay. That actually works very easily. Just moving forwards here. Oh, slow down. Make a sharp turn. Okay, we can. A little bit sticky on sharp turn. Let's head off. That works pretty well, actually. He gets the monitors, running lights, extra lift. That brings it quite high up. Go on extra lift. Um, cool. So we actually have some things here. So engines, fuel, velocity, radar. So that's our radar there. That's really nice. Nice that we could change that. We got our rudders, prop pitch. Okay, cool. What I would like to test is I want to test the waypoint system. So, enter waypoints. Uh, is there a way to activate Autopilot. Uh, let's see. So, huh. I guess it's just showing you the location. I don't know if it actually is automatic. It won't automatically drive there. So yeah. Okay. Fair enough. That's fine. Let's go and just test that out a little bit more. You can actually swap the bow thrusters and things around. So we can pop that and move. Not that quick. I was expecting it to be a little bit quicker on this, but what we can do is I might actually need here. Does he have any controls? Doesn't. Thinking maybe he might have like controls to set it a little bit faster. Our generation, we've got our talk and everything there. That doesn't do anything. Wonder if extra lift. Well, let's take let's take the lift. Off. Yeah, extra lift does give us a little bit of speed. We are like above the water here. So let's actually take extra lift and lift hands off. Does it work? Are the lift hands? Doesn't look like it does. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. So let's get it on extra lift. And because we we'll get a little more speed out of it. Then I want to see how it handles, how it manages to handle going up onto land. Because that is very important, of course, especially when you are hovercraft. Is that you're meant to go on water and on land? So let's go and just turn it around here. And that should be fine. Oops, okay. No, no. It's because we've got the extra lift. Let's get off. Try and go up on that. So let's get on again. See how it handles getting up onto that there and then going around there. I still got the extra lift on. Airy, it should just be able to get up and on there. A little bit of a. Okay, it's 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 managed. It's just staring is not the greatest, to be honest. 
Um, and let's take off the extra lift here. That'll probably help it quite a bit. Uh, it does transition well, but it's still kind of just off the water. It's not actually on the water, but I guess that's that's obviously the, that is how they work. To be fair, um, would like the steering to be a little bit more responsive on it, but just going up here, see it does get caught, almost like it's not reacting quick enough. There it's fine. There it's just managed perfectly fine. But yeah, um, really cool creation, really cool. I, I think I've seen it once before, but not in this kind of level of detail where he's really gone and done this whole flotation thing, which is really, really cool. Um, but definitely a cool one to go check out and a nice one for the episode. Let's go and move on to the next creation. And moving on to the next creation of the episode, we have the NNTC Atheon Private Jet. This is a creation done by that cool cat one. Now, this is meant to be a luxury private jet, uh, including quite a lot of features in there. It seems like he's got a bunch of things up in the cockpit, including lure screens and things uh, in the actual cabin itself, a couple of games and a couple of screens. Also, uh, there's beds inside there. There's pretty much everything you need. So let's spawn this one in and see how it flies here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning in the next plane, really quite nice. I like how it spawns in with the actual ramp and the door open or the hatch open really quite nice um, going around it seems like we have some nice landing gear underneath with some lights and a connector uh, not much else on the exterior so we have nice and slanted there on the wings that's pretty cool uh, seems like another door to get in and possibly yeah service hatch on this that's pretty cool so we have one two three jet exhausts a rear camera also and moving along, just the wings again, and another looks like an emergency escape hatch. Cool, nice design, I really like it. Very nice and curved with obviously using the wedge blocks. Uh, let's go and get inside. So jumping up here and let's get the door closed. And parachutes, oh, okay. We have parachutes here, ah, cool. We have a cockpit door, is there any lights? So hidden crew bed, okay, that's pretty cool too. And we have cabinet door, so we get a little cabinet. Very nice detail. Door to go through, and we have like a little passenger lounge. Once again, lights, but we do have trays. Cool. Okay. And looks like a monitor here. The player's song. Okay. And emergency escape. We have a bedroom. Okay. We have a, another bedroom over here with another monitor in it. And moving to the back, we have a bathroom with a camera in it. Oh, I'm guessing that's full of mirror. Okay, that's fair enough. And we have another door there, and we even have a little shower. Nice. Okay. Cool. Very nice detailed. Very, very nice detailed. Carpets look really cool. Seats look really nice. Okay, so let's make our way into the cockpit. So we have two parachutes. Oh, that's really cool. They go and slide in and out. That's really nice. Uh, what else we have? A little jump seat here with uh, yeah, some jump seats and another screen of some sort. Okay. Uh, we have pilot seat and a co-pilot seat. Couple brakes and throttle, engines, uh, checklist, aux tanks and all of our systems. Okay, let's get the main battery on. Okay, well, wow. so we got a really loads of systems we even have a digital checklist system that's pretty cool um let's see what else we have so hotkeys i want to check the swap checklist and mdf okay and then we also have a hud oh that's cool okay so a hud that actually goes and slides out that's really nice cool so let's see if we can get this started so if i'm correct we got main battery on now we need some fuel so let's get some fuel on we can get the APU on and let's see we need to bleed some airs out of everything so APU bleed, bleed to packs right there and then let's get starters on and then bleed the systems perfect that looks good to me uh let's check yeah so that all those three are coming up it's got a beeping sound for something that is going on not too sure yet uh, that's fine everything seems fine as it is so let's get our brakes off and we'll get our throttle up ever so slightly let's see if we can 
it's not moving forward here. Yep, there we go. That's why we're not moving. Okay, we'll get lined up here. We'll get our throttles all the way down. Be able to line up ever so slightly. I don't have that much runway, to be honest. That's fine. Okay, so we're doing well here. Perfect. Just about lined up and get the throttle up here. Good. Throttle up. Eyes up. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Let's get the throttle down. It's on. And I, I like the reading here on there. It's really nice. Okay, inverted. Uh, which is fine. It's not my preference personally for flying. That's very nice. Really like the detail here. Screens are really cool. Let's see if we can turn a bit. Nice. Okay, we need to get our landing gear up. The landing gear. I remember seeing it somewhere. Parking brakes, flaps up, flaps down. Landing gear, there we go. Perfect. In we go. Really cool. Let's double check that HUD. I want to see how the HUD works. Oh, that's awesome that it's right here in front of you. That is really cool. Then we have a little runway here. That's really... This is probably... Very, very, very close to, I'm guessing, to flying a real thing. But I love how the systems are in here. Everything just works together. Um, ah, really, really quite nice to get that HUD down. Um, very responsive also. Really cool. Autopilot systems, he said waypoint systems not working, but we can set our heading hold um, and we can do a alt and heading hold. Altitude up, down, alt up. And then I guess we could just set that. Yep, we could too. Wow. Okay, very nice. And then it's just going to fly the heading and that altitude. Very, very cool plane. Definitely go check that one out. Uh, awesome. Let's go and let's move on to the next creation of the episode. And moving on to the next creation of the episode, we have the RMS Persia. This is a creation done in 1855 and it's done by J. Matt. Now this is meant to be a British paddle steamer, uh, part of the Canard line here. Apparently quite a lot of features including uh, working paddles that actually moves it to about 21 knots which is pretty cool. Uh, two helms, there's lifeboats on there, pretty cool so far. So let's spawn this one in and see how it works here in the world of Stormworks. And spawning in the next creation, this looks absolutely stunning. The amount of detail here, really really cool with obviously the paddles on either side really really cool so far i like the rigging let's go and jump on let's see what we have so it looks like we have um that actually looked like a helm just over there so let's just see if we can get up there um we have some flares and then we have the helm so we'll come back to that in a few minutes uh what else do we have down here so she's allowed to go down there we have the life rafts on either side that we can use we also have a cargo hold is there a crane doesn't look like one uh, a little area up there. We also have some hole shoots. Okay, so that's fuel. Uh, we have anchor room. So let's go down to the anchor room here. You get to see the anchor room. And we, oh, can we actually go further down? And we get to see a like a medical room inside there. So yeah, both medical rooms. And we can even go further down. Wow. Okay, so we have like a little cargo hold. So let's carry on exploring down here. More. This looks like the boiler room with mechanics there to actually power everything that's really cool. okay let's try and find our way around here it doesn't look like we're actually meant to be here so let's go up that way and then we can go down here so we have the boilers we have cargo hold number two so this is the rear of the vessel so we can go back to that later um well, i like all this stuff and this all moves as far as i'm aware because it's all on pivots and things Really excited to see how that's going to work. So engine room, where we just came from. We have a toilet in there. Uh, we have cabin 11. Okay, some more cabins and things. Uh, we have what do we, medical bay again. So, okay, that's possibly the same one we saw earlier. Close that off. 
Um, same on the other side as far as I'm aware, and we can go back up to the next level. So this is like a passenger area with some heating in here. Nice. Uh, let's move around. So light boilers. Okay, so we just got the boilers lit. I would like to know if there was a light, a light for the whole ship. So there's something there. Oh, okay. And uh, let's carry on. So some more seating down this way. Looks like we have a nice little bag and a staircase to go back down where we were earlier on. Move our way back up again. We have another little area with a chart map. Okay. That door. Uh, we have any stairs to get up. Okay, so we have another helm in here. So let's go to that helm. So where are we in the ship currently? Uh, are we at the back of the ship or front of the ship? I'm trying to figure out where we actually are. Ship. Ah, uh, we're right here at the back. Okay. We're at the back of the ship. So we can actually use both those helms. I'm not going to use just yet. Chart map. Let's go see what else we can still find. Gone through that door. Wonder where the lights are for this whole thing. Nice little flag at the back. And the cargo hold. Okay, so let's go up onto this here and lights for the ship anchor up and down lights there we go that's what we're looking for Ooh, that just hit the fps um okay i guess i'm going to turn that off navigation lights is fine uh distress signal and then we have a sinking ship mode okay um so we have ad ports towards okay forwards backwards whistle okay navigation lights anchor up anchor down and send distress so Oh wow, that's pretty quick. That is cool. That's going actually really quickly for paddle boats. Those must be running quite quickly. And you can kind of see inside here, this is actually moving. Really cool. It reminds me of what I think GB Danny's ones. Very similar. How does it turn? That's very stable and very smooth. That is really cool lovely boats but yeah that's a really nice one uh let's go and let's move on to the next creation of the episode and moving on to the last creation of the episode we have uss voyager ncc 74656 this is a creation run by ton 13579 now this is meant to be almost a replica of the uss voyager of the galaxy class uh he said it's not one to one uh but it is pretty close it's said about i think one to six scale replica of the star trek voyager uh quite a few features there's alert modes there's a top speed of around looks like 130 kilometers per an hour uh, there's two skate pods, two winches, emergency beacons in there, radios, capacity for about 11 crew members, 31 passengers, or injured, uh, diving stuff, parachute, thermal gear, pretty much everything you need. So really excited to test this one out. Uh, so let's spawn it in and see how it flies here in the world of Stormers. And spawning in the last creation, this looks really cool. I love how he's used uh, all these wedges and things. It really has a nice shape to it here. It's a nice curve that goes around it. Uh, it seems like we have some type of platform there to get up on it. Uh, we then have thrusters on either side and looks like a platform at the back here with a winch. Uh, camera here at the back and not much else really going around there just yet. So let's go and get inside. It's a little bit chunky, but it's not too bad here at the military island. Uh, let's go up into the transporter beam because it lights up. That's pretty cool. We have a transporter beam. Uh, no lights so far. Let's see if we can make our way around. So that controls for the transporter beam. Automatic door left and right on here. Okay, looks like a winch system over there and down this side. I think down that side. Uh, or there. Okay, so it looks like a nice little galley area or canteen area. Another door to go out and... 
Okay, so we have a, looks like an elevator. Okay, so let's go up. Uh, we can move our way down this way. So we have some screens and some controls. We have big round blue thing and we have the rear platform. Okay, some harnesses and things there. Pretty cool. Uh, can we get back inside? Thank you. Uh, okay, so we have a whole bunch of controls here. So lights, vital systems, main breaker on, electrical circuit breakers. Let's get all that on. Uh, bridge. Yeah, let's get all those systems on too. Okay, so then we get this. So the 3M system and a hop core starter. Okay, so that's starting up the engines. Uh, we're not going to get any of the lights on just because it's already chunky as it is. Uh, let's move back now. What else do we have? So, it's like ship heaters and medical room there. Okay, let's go up the elevator and see what we can find. It's starting to get a little bit chunky now. Uh, let's go up the elevator. Okay, so we have our control room here. Hello everyone, Future Jersey here. Unfortunately, this creation was so bad on the lag, it's almost made, it just was terrible when I went to review the footage. So we just jumped it a bit here to when I was actually flying it and out of the cockpit where it was lagging a lot. I think we can get the speed of it. That's forward. There we go. Awesome. That's really nice. Handles really well. Once we're out of the way from the islands, the FPS has gotten a little better. Um, but yeah, really, really cool. Loads of attention to detail. I would have loved to be completely smooth, but I think that's completely impossible here in Stormworks. Um, yeah, awesome creation. Love the systems here. It just gets so chunky when we're inside. But yeah, really, really nice. Outside is perfectly fine. What an awesome creation to end this episode off with. Even underneath here, lovely design. Cool. So I think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.